His Imperial Majesty. Oh, yeah. An honor to be with you. You're welcome. Thank have, you very have, much. Have a seat. Thank you so much. <laughs> Dear viewers, I have the honor here to be with uh, His Imperial Majesty from Kemachemkan the First. He has two master's degrees, a PhD. He's the Anya Tema of Atuabeshi. And he's a professor and ruler, so he's a professor in the University of Wisconsin and also a traditional ruler. So a pleasure to be with you once more throughout well. his uh, You're imperial well. <laughs> You're well. majesty. I'm so impressed to be here because, uh, first of all, something very, very breaking uh, took place on the 2nd of March 2021 when Pope Francis appointed for the very first time an African native born from Cameroon as the Bishop in the United States of America. I've heard about you, I've read many books which you've published about the church. You grew up knowing many bishops back home in Cameroon, so I was uh, inspired to carry out this uh, scientific research with you. And I thank you for having made it possible. Before I continue, could you tell me more about you? Oh, thank you so much. I, I am actually Catholic, okay. so I know the tradition well. Exactly. Um, even though my predecessor made uh, His Imperial Majesty from Germany in the first was not Christian. He made sure he sent me to a Catholic mission school. Exactly. So I grew up Catholic and so I know the position of the, the bishops in church. In my time, the Bishop of Boya was Jules Peters, exactly. who confirmed me. I see. Uh, all my elementary education was by the Catholics. Okay. I went to a Catholic secondary school. I'm the, the pioneer of um, a lady seat of wisdom college, college from Tem. And before then, I've been raised in So. Okay. And so I sat the common entrance in um, in uh, St. Augustine's. I see. And I, my desire was to go to St. Joseph's because most people from my area went to Sasse. College. So when I was in So and took the entrance and interviewing to Sasse, okay. the late chief, my father, mm -hmm. his imperial majesty from Kemuka in the first, okay. asked that I be brought back home because Sase had come to Bama. Okay. And so that's how I returned in July of 1966. And you were the first batch of Yeah, and I was one of the first 42 students okay. who started a Lady Sida Wisdom College. Right. One how was experience then with the folklore movement? There were those who established oh, that. Oh, the folklore had just arrived, and um, they started a dispensary, moving on to a hospital later on by okay. 1969, and then the college. They had these two projects, so it was a big experience for those of us who grew up in the rural country. We were very proud that we were students. Okay. Uh, we were the only ones, and like I said, we we're only 42 of us. So we were, we were the cream of the, of the crop. Exactly. The, yeah. the academic, uh, the academic uh, people at, uh, then. then young. Even though some of us, me in particular, I didn't know of the GC. I just knew that I was a student. I see. <laughs> yes. Quite interesting. I was just proud to be a student. And, our parents who sent us there, especially the those that were from the locality, they were making a big effort okay. to send children because it was costly. I see. Then, I see. yeah. So we were actually the spoiled ch children, children of the times. Yes. So the church played a great role by establishing that. Uh, oh yes. And held you know, with a college. Oh yes. Oh yes. A major, major, major role. And you told me it was down to Bill of Jesus who intervened. Um, the story is told yeah. that Fontem, His uh, Majesty Fontem de Fang, okay. had taken this problem to the bishop because many children were dying in the area. Infant mortality rates were very, very high. Okay. And so he had been begging for some healthcare facility in the area to take charge of that. Okay. And so when uh, Kiara and the Fokulari came, well, Bishop Peters was the bishop in charge of the entire 
the entire uh, jurisdiction. Area. Which they used to call it then West Cameroon. Okay. So they came to him, and because of the intervention or the pleadings of Fontaine Bifan, the bishop sent Kiara and the Focolare to Fontaine or to Bangor. Yeah. So uh, we were very blessed that oh. the college came because no one can underestimate the role of uh, of, of that college today 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 social cultural development of the entire area yes wow so after that you had a wonderful time there for how many years were you there if i may ask five years five years secondary school yes interesting what happened after oh uh, well <laughs> that was all about my own education can you believe okay because as a pioneer in a, a rural school like I told you earlier, I didn't even know there was something like the GC wow. at the end of the program. So many of us, I think the best student in class had seven, seven O levels. Wow. I had five, okay. which was a feat for a guy who spent all his time playing soccer. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you so, loved soccer? Oh, yeah. I, I spent on Saturdays, I could play from one o'clock till six. And you enjoyed it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So passing a few papers was a miracle. Was a miracle, and people couldn't believe that he did it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think he was very intelligent. Well, I don't know. I think so. so. But so, <laughs> in our days, there was only cast Bambi there alone. Okay. That's a high school where students could go to. I see. So in those days too, cast it meant that um, students first had to write a cast entrance. And then have at least eight O levels in wow. good grades. Interesting. So Cas Bambili wasn't meant for every kind of student. student. Wow. And so those of us who Wi-Fi. didn't even know about it never went anywhere. And can you believe I went I joined a band. Oh wow. I went to live with an auntie in Tombell. Okay. And there was a place called Ringo Hotel. I see. And they had a little band. I joined the band. And I was there for about a year, eight months. Yeah. And people came and pulled my ears away. There's no bad boy about the became progress, anything. became anything exactly. in those days. And so I left and I went to teach English in Chang, in a oh. place called Grand College de la Menua. Interesting. Yeah, so I taught for about 10 years wow. before I went away to Nigeria, taught at the Advanced Teachers College in Jalingo for another one year. Nigeria before I went to the University of Benin. You were so courageous to go to Nigeria. And I went there without knowing anyone. Can you imagine? Uh, I, I, I went through and saw where I had grown up as a kid. Okay. Took a Land Rover at the market. Okay. And we went through the mountains, through and dune to Mbo. Have you ever been to Mwa? No. Oh my goodness. I've never been to Nigeria through that. that, that, oh. that, that uh, People water. say the, the Bangwa Road is bad. Yeah, that you one need is... to go to Mwa. Oh my God! And climb a hill called Rom Hill. So it was a nightmare. <laughs> oh, a nightmare! <laughs> Can you believe the in the night? Yes. For the people. driver would put a torch. There was you are sitting in front. A gallon of gas is standing there. With, you see the connections of the cable. Oh my God! <laughs> and the driver has a, a torch light in his mouth, and Time that's how you are driving through. The tracks of cattle oh in God. the highlands hmm. between um, um, between Mwa okay. in Cameroon and Genbo, a place in Mambila Plateau in Nigeria called Ngenbo. So it was something. Wow. Yeah. But you made it, you got to. We made it, got to Jalingo, Jalingo and on to Yola. Wow. And I joined a group of school leaders. Uh, uh, they were looking for work. I too was looking for, for work. work. <laughs> so I finally got uh, a job with them and okay. I was sent to Jalingo. So what did you do? You were a teacher? Yeah, I taught French in oh, Jalingo wow. for just as Jalingo for one year. And while I was teaching there, a certain um, mm. rector of the Advanced Teachers College, Jalingo, okay. I think he was called Mustafa Abba or something, Mustafa. hired me to teach French in, in, in at the Advanced Teachers College. This was 1979 80. Interesting. Mm-hmm. So you taught French there and, and then, then wrote the jam entrance and wow. 
went to the University of Benin. Was it easy for you to be admitted to Nigeria? Oh, my admission was a nightmare. I think it's a story for a different day. I would like to know what happened. <laughs> it's a story for a different oh, okay, day. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because it was tough. I, uh, I had applied to JAM, and my first choice was Ibadan. Therefore. From coming from Cameroon, we didn't know the younger universities. We knew the older ones like Ibadan, Zaria, Suka. Lagos, so okay. my first choice was Ibadan. I see. But I didn't know that Ibadan did not admit in the arts okay. through JAM. Oh. JAM is Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board. And you wanted to do arts? I wanted, well, I was a, I was always an art student. Okay. <laughs> I'm about the worst student on earth in science. In <laughs> mathematics, mathematics is my life. It was a nightmare for me too. Yeah, so that's what I had to do. And from Jalingo, even though I was teaching up in the higher secondaries and even uh, the advanced teachers call it, yeah. I was still called junior staff. Can you imagine? You needed a degree to be senior, senior staff, staff and live in the senior staff quarters. quarters. And that's where you were. <laughs> and living in the senior staff quarters meant that you had the house with a fan on the roof, you had a fridge, you okay. had a, a, a gas cooker or some cooker. I see. But I didn't have a degree, so I was in the junior staff quarters. Quarter. <laughs> With a table fan oh and, 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 and no fridge and nothing. Oh. And do you know how hot it no, is in Dola? It is. Oh Extremely. my goodness. Because it's up north. Yo, and it's along the river Benway. Oh. It is extremely hot. hot. <laughs> and so it was tough. And even though I was teaching in Form 5 and the advanced teacher, I was still a junior staff. So my greatest ambition Therefore. was to graduate. It didn't matter in what. Okay. I just wanted to be called a graduate. To have a degree. Yeah. And you didn't make it. I, oh. So after that experience, you got admission into the university. I got admission into the University of Benin after many. I, I don't want to go that you route. That Otherwise, if I not finish. I see. <laughs> it, it, but I got admission into the University, university of, Benin. of Benin. And you. And um, at the end of my first year, yes. I was not only the the best student in the department yeah, of foreign it. languages and, and, and... You distinguished yourself with a bachelor first class, summa cum laude? Oh, before then, before the bachelor's, okay. I, after my year one, in the part one degree examination, I was the best of my department. Interesting. And the overall best of the university and was awarded a university scholarship for the remaining sessions of oh my, my stay. God. And alongside two other uh, two other students, and you specialize in foreign uh, foreign languages. languages. Yeah, foreign languages. What and then there was another you? student who did math. Okay. And then another student in engineering. So we're three university scholars from nineteen from nineteen eighty one. I see. Because I matriculated in nineteen eighty. I see. Yes. What attracted you into foreign languages, if I may ask? Uh, well. Yeah. Uh, from when I graduated from Cedar Wisdom, I, I also won the best prize in arts. I see. <laughs> my friend, uh, Congratulations. my friend Dr. Ekokobe was the best, won the best uh, prize in science. Okay. And I won the best prize in arts, and I think I was, I was good in arts. Wow. So, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I was good. In so that's why when you went. And to then the... even in Cedar Wisdom, I was doing very well in French and. Oh, Those wow. kinds of languages, yes. I see. So you, you distinguished yourself in 1984 at the University of Benin with a Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor in Arts, yes. first class. Yes. As a matter of fact, I'm the first first class from the University of Benin. Interesting. Yes. And my professors were usually very happy because when they introduced me that this is that first class, yeah. the older professors would rise and say, son, keep yeah. it up. Okay. We who were your professors we didn't make a first class. Wow. That Congratulations. Is true. And uh, I used to have a friend in Cameroon, Batebeson. Oh, the great Batebeson. The great Batebeson used to great tell. writer. Yes. He used to tell people, this is the only student who beat me in college. <laughs> in I university. Mean, and I told him, Bate, well, I had a first class. You had a second class offer. Yes. But everyone knows about Bate, but no one knows about Could you imagine? So, yeah. Wow, wow, I'm so impressed. And when I finished, um, the university gave me a scholarship, scholarship to do a PhD. Okay. Because generally when you have a BA first class, yes, when you have a first degree at the first class level, yes, you don't do a master's anymore. You go straight to, you go straight to a PhD. 
So what happened? And so the university gave me a scholarship to, to study abroad and then come back as a lecturer for lectureship to prepare me for lectureship position in the university. Okay. Generally, first class students are not let go. Okay, the university keep them. keeps them. I see. Unfortunately, I, I didn't have a passport. Oh my God. Yeah, and so I couldn't travel abroad. Oh my God. For the PhD program. And it was as a matter of fact, you? if I'd had a passport yes, by 1988, I would have had a PhD. Yeah. Oh my God. So I returned to Cameroon to the family I already had. Okay. And started thinking of what to do next. Really next? Mm -hmm. So what came up next? Uh, well, I came to a world of concours. Um, I tried to get so to... Many. I, well, I think I just tried to because you need to pay for all these things. Exactly. I tried to get to Eric. Okay. And then I heard that they were starting another big school in Buda in called yes. Asti. Exactly. I took the entrance, I see. and uh, I think we were about 14 more boys and girls. Okay. I was the only one who passed, and I went to Boya. Wow. Yeah. And so I'm also a pioneer. I've had this history of, of pioneering I would been the first. I was a pioneer in the primary school. I was a pioneer in the, in the secondary, secondary school. school, secondary school. And pioneer? in my grad Postgraduate university studies, graduate studies, I was also a pioneer, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I'm one of the 30 students who inaugurated the University of Boya through the school called the Advanced, uh, uh, school, Advanced of school of Translators Translation. and Interpreters. Yes. And you, you? And I used to even be the, the first student union president there. Interesting. So yeah. you're a man of community, a leader, you have those leadership qualities. Somehow, yeah, somehow. I'm so impressed. Mm -hmm. For so then you had a master's degree in that uh, university. Yeah, well, um, the, the 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 qualification from ST was the master's level. Yes. Interesting. So you did uh, uh, graduate there with a master's in translation. Translation. Yes. Interesting. And after that, from what I can read here, you went into uh, to work. I went to work. I first began to work at the presidency. And then the presidency transferred me to the Ministry of External Relations, Interesting. where I soon became uh, was appointed by the minister to 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 a service head. I think that was when I met you for the first time. Maybe I yeah. was six years old, and you came to my brother's baptism, my my two brothers and sisters. Oh, it, and Bamayo. And you were the interpreter. Oh, okay. And I still I still vividly I can still picture you translating and interpreting in French. Because it's the person most people were speaking in English. Yes. You were extremely elegant with the tie. I I, I admired your bilingualism. And yeah, I said well, I want to be bilingual. I again. was using expressions that, that you like. Yes. For example, you said uh uh change sound, ce qu'il vient de dire. No, no, I enjoy your gesticulations. <laughs> <laughs> I said I want to be like him, I want to be I want to learn as many languages as possible. Right. And that really I still have it in my mind. Thank you. It left me a lasting impression. Thank you. And from there, I said, I want to learn language. I want to learn French, thank you. Spanish, and thank you very much for that. Uh, You're welcome. Yeah, I still You're vividly welcome. remember, and I still have the picture. Oh, you do? Yes, the picture when you were interpreting. Oh, when well, nice. Azudam chef, it was an Azudam chef who was speaking, a very important authority. Yes. And he was speaking in English with some francophones there because yes. I was born in Balmayo. Yes. And you were the liaison. You were the person trying to. To, to Making the communication go through. The interpret. Okay. So, you have really inspired me. Thank, Thank you. you so much. You're welcome. So, after that experience, you start working in the Minister of External Relations. What came up next? Uh, well, um, Premier X. First, in 1993, I think. Okay, so. With the introduction of um, multi party politics. There was a lot of violence in the country. Exactly, I remember. And the first thing I did was I, 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 I formed an organization, okay. the Association for Nonviolence, wow. which was aimed at introducing a third force. Exactly. I was trying, um, I had read about nonviolence and Martin Luther King and Gandhi. Gandhi. Yeah. And I tried to. <coughs> Excuse me. I tried to introduce um, 
a third voice in the politics that, that people could disagree exactly. without being violent to That's each other. That's true. Uh, I tried uh, between 93 and 98, I was making a lot of headway. The organization was even registered at the United Nations. Um, but I was misunderstood I because the government yes. and, the, and the party and the CPDM party thought I was an against, opposition, exactly, I was against, against them. them. Not knowing that <laughs> you were a conflict to his own. The, the, the SDF, the main opposition leader or most of the opposition people, people thought I was working on the payroll of government exactly. to, to pacify people or to kind of soften minds of people. Uh, and so I was caught between two enemies. Two enemies. And so I think uh, that was just an element of my own life. Okay. I have been, Always been misunderstood. misunderstood. Always, most of the time. Most of the time I've been misunderstood. By the intentions so, you have. By the intentions I have. I was genuinely exactly. preaching non-violence. We could the opposition and the government could disagree exactly. and talk and dialogue, and dialogue. instead yeah. of burning and killing, killing and the kind of things where well, you were still pretty young in 1993, 1992, 93 to see, is it, did I see 92? Yeah, 92, yes. because multi-party started around 1990, Okay. after Perestroika and Glasnost. Yes. by the Russian leader at the time. Okay. Uh, so there was this general um, um, flow for a return to multi parties. Multi -party. You know, we have been, in Africa, we've been kind of followers exactly. all the time. We, 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 we have not come up with our own ideas. From the 1960s and independence, the way to go was one party for nation building, or oh, so it was said. But from 1990, after Glasnost, Europe was now prescribing multi partyism for African countries. Mm. So the introduction was pretty brutal. Okay. Yes. And you came up with a very nice idea as, yeah, as a promoter of peace. Yes. And you were misunderstood. I was misunderstood. So what were the consequences? Uh, well, I don't know. Um, but I, I only know that um, my first public address okay, so. was in 19... January 1995. Okay. When I did, I was invited by the American Embassy wow. to do the Martin Luther King Lecture. And I still can remember the title was Martin Luther King Jr. An Invitation to Nascent African Democrats. That was the title of my talk. And the talk went so very well. The ambassador then was there. And the many embassies, many ambassadors came in. The cream of the Yaoundé elite all came to the American Cultural Center to hear me talk and okay. uh, I took questions. Many of them even came from, there was this guy called Solomon Fogwe, okay. who was um, chair of the um, Human Rights Commission then or something. They were all there to hear me talk. The ambassador asked me how long I had stayed in America to know so much about exactly. America. <laughs> so what was the answer? Well, I told her I'd never been in America. Yeah, she, she couldn't believe it. Oh, yeah, yes. research. Uh, yeah, I had done a lot. I'd been studying Martin Luther King. Okay. And then in that same year, I got the, a mid-career professional scholarship from the Americans to come to study uh, leadership, the world leadership States. in the United States. Wow, impressive. And I came to the University of Minnesota and did a Hubert Humphrey. Yeah. Institute for Public Affairs. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there, uh, I spoke to me. I, I did my second Martin Luther King lecture again at the Presbyterian Cathedral in Minneapolis. Wow. And I uh, was invited to speak at the School of International and Public Affairs at Columbia University in New York City. Interesting. Uh, on P democracy and conflicts 
in Africa and things like that. And so I started uh, lots of um, public speaking engagements. Quite remarkable. Yeah. So did you go back to, to school from here? I see you had a master's in conflict resolution from Antioch University in Yellow Spring. Uh, well, I started studying the, the Fulbright program. I didn't just stay. Okay. In fact, I took about 39 graduate credits. Wow. From what you had done? During the year. Oh, wow. So I you... spent the year taking classes. Even wow. though it was a non-degree program. Can you imagine? I spent a lot of time taking so graduate passionate, credits. So yes. passionate yeah. about about peace, nonviolence. Exactly. I think the focus of my program was uh, leadership. Yes, for for the common good. Okay. And then there was uh, there were classes like um, international human rights law, okay. wow. um, public policy analysis, wow. and conflict management. Those were my core classes. But I took time. I took many other classes in university. Impressive. And I had 29 or 39 graduate credits already. And then I went to um, do my internship okay. at the Martin Luther King Junior Center. Hmm. I was an intern there for a long time. Okay. And uh, I went to the Iowa P Peace Institute at Grinnell, okay. Iowa. Yes. And so I've been passionate about p issues of peace and conflict studies. Yes, wow. for long. You've always been. <coughs> I actually started enrolled at Antioch before I left. I see. Enrolled for the masters that you talked about before I left. Yes. So he's. Uh, Many he's people a... had asked me to stay. Okay, but you said no. I said no. I come to the United States as a guest. Okay. At a very high level, I didn't see myself staying. I see. But thank goodness, I didn't stay. Okay. Because the late chief, my father, whose Your picture father? you see here, yes, well. passed away only one year, six months after my return from the United States. Oh my God! What yeah. a coincidence it was. Yeah. So I'm so thankful that I didn't stay. Okay, didn't stay. Yes. So you went through the, the, the all the traditional rites and processes during his uh, you mourn your father died, and uh, there were so many people from the pictures I saw. Many people mourn your, your, your dad who was a, his royal emperor, majesty. Yeah. Uh, 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 well, um, from Kemachan. From Kemachan. No, 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 from Kemachan. From Kemachan. Yes. From Kemachan. Yes. Um, of course, yes. The enthronement rights and things are very typical, and those are exceptional uh, in the sense that um, the prince, when you, you hear, you learn kind of about the passing. Okay. You go home, you don't know, you least expect exactly. that you might be the next. And so, yeah, it was, it was, it was not only enriching, it was uh, a surprise, a big one. But before then, you had been a man of culture. You had been interested in, as a leader, you had had those qualities. So were you, uh, you had the qualities. Well, maybe my ancestors saw those in me. Exactly. I, I would know. Even though I've been selected by the American Embassy as a leader, yeah. because my training at the Hubert was for world leadership, exactly, uh, it would appear America had discovered that the Soviet Union was going to crumble, okay. and so they were going to be the only leaders of the world, and so they needed partners from across the world. They were sending such lights across the world to look for emerging leaders, leaders to bring them to America so that they begin to be acquainted with the American ways in order that by the time America emerges yes, and those people emerge in their home countries, America could easily partner with them. I, I think that was the framework for the training I, I came I came I, I came on. Yes. So before we move on, what can you tell this audience about the importance of culture? You know, many of us from Cameroon or from African continent, we come to the United States or to Europe, we forget about our identity. The way? For, for, from the experience I've had. Well, many don't even want to put on their, their let's say, cultural attire. They don't feel comfortable. They, 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 they don't want to even, well, from my experience, many people I've met, they don't want people to even know they're from Africa. They don't, they don't. Interesting. 
culture is the center for human beings, for human life. Every people have a culture and every culture has a reason for doing what it does. If you, since I've been here, people, I don't wear jeans, blue jeans. Okay. And people are a little surprised. So why don't so you wear jeans? I said, well, I represent a culture. Exactly. The blue jeans culture is another culture. If I don't, if I wear blue jeans, yes. people may never know who I am. I might just go unnoticed. But when I'm dressed in my cultural uh, attire, attire, people stop to find out, but who is that? Exactly. Uh -huh. <laughs> and they do that. Well, I think that culture, the definition sometimes that I think I like to work with, yes, well. is that culture is what is left when everything is taken away from you. Exactly. So, <laughs> it's so culture important. is central to existence. Primordial. So, uh, I, I think I represent my culture and it is a duty to be who I am. Exactly, your identity. To be who I am. Uh, that culture doesn't, uh, has no complex against other cultures. No. And so, I hold my head very high wherever I am. So yeah. happy to hear that. Yeah. So impressed. So for after that, you move into a PhD program. I'm so impressed to see a, 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 a traditional ruler who is also a professor in the university. Oh. A full-time professor. Yeah. It's quite remarkable. Oh, well, thank you. So I'm really inquisitive to know. Uh, so after the master's program, you went into a PhD program. Uh, after the master's program, um, no, sorry about that. You went back home after the morning of your of of of, of his uh, his imperial, imperial majesty, majesty, my late father, your late father. Mm -hmm. You were you were surprised that you were chosen yeah. to be there mm -hmm. the, the, the to, to ascend the throne. Yes. Ascend the throne. Mm -hmm. How did you feel? It was a surprise, and you couldn't. Um, there was nothing anybody could do about it. Okay. Um, it's like Achebe says, God's case, no yeah. appeal. Okay. <laughs> I couldn't appeal to anybody, so I had to be. Someone has to be. Exactly. If I had been chosen from among all the princes and princesses, it means that there was something something in you in me that true. was was seen as was perceived as him being the next in line. Exactly. Yeah. The next uh, the, like, the next in line to wear this wow. all this handed down. From the other kings that who have ruled before. Mm -hmm. So you went through the process of uh, taking mm -hmm. over. Yeah. And it I, takes time in that tradition. Yes. Can you uh, uh, elucidate more on the process? Uh, uh, the enthronement yes, itself what? is a teaching experience. Okay. Traditionally, it went for nine weeks. Wow. Hmm. But because of what people might call modernism yes, and because well. I was working in some place okay. I, I wasn't that in there for that long but this is a time where the new king enthroned because in my culture yes, well. princes don't have a place in society okay. they are about the lowest of the lowest I see. they are incog incognito I see. <laughs> incognito and, yes princes in the palace, princes don't have a seat. Their seat is on the drum. And the wungang man Okay. Interesting. <laughs> and the, the drum is lying somewhere. So if you enter the palace like this, there was no seat for a prince. So, so on the day you are enthroned, enthroned as the next, yes. now you are going from dust, to from grass to grace. Wow. The, dis the difference is very, 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 very great. Very great. And so you are taught okay, so. how to move now as a king. Hmm. You are taught, you have to learn how to eat as king. That's if kings eat, because in my tradition, kings don't eat. I see. Because they are no longer people, they are no longer human beings. That's, true. That's why when, when a king, we say a king has, 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 uh, has disappeared. Has disappeared. Oh, 
Oh, you believe. never say that he died because no. kings don't die. Exactly. Individuals may die, but kings, so kings don't, don't die. Wow. So you you don't die. Yes, boy. You don't eat. You don't uh, maybe empty your bowels. Okay. <laughs> In any case, during that enthronement process, that is when you are learning how to be a king. How to be a king, wow. in terms of how you talk, okay. how you walk, mm. how you interact, mm. how you dress, okay. uh, how you carry yourself so, around, yeah. and so so it's a whole school. Wow. And you went through that yes. for nine years. Yes. And after that, you were enthroned as the. No, no, no. <laughs> You are enthroned before you go through that. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you're enthroned and then you go You through. are enthroned immediately. Okay. It is announced that the other king has disappeared. The king might disappear. Yes, well. No one says it. Okay. They may know it, but no one says it. Wow. The day they are ready to make it public yes, well. is the day you are enthroned. Impressive. Yes. You are no. First of all, you are crowned in private. Okay, that's in private. Nobody sees. Nobody knows. It is all in private oh. and enthroned in public. Okay. Yeah, the enthronement is public, but the crowning is private. and all that goes with that is is is, is very much behind the scenes. So you enthroned as the Swahama. His Royal Majesty was crowned of, first. You were crowned as His Royal Majesty. Yes. Successor. Successor. And then, and then you were enthroned. The next one, yes. Mm -hmm. As His Imperial uh, Majesty, Majesty on, of on October of Atobechet. Yes, Atobechet. That's the Kingdom of Atobechet. Yes. On October, if I may October 6, 1997. Wow. So I have been on the throne now for 24 years. 24 years? That's yeah. quite impressive. Yeah. It means that you've had a lot of projects. Well, I was. Well, I, I went to. I've been doing a lot of research about the kingdom. Uh -huh. It's quite remarkable. Yeah. That I discovered these projects, which I'll just like you to comment on. The first is the the Emma Atoabechi Palace project. Oh yeah. Well, uh, given where Atoabechi itself is located yes, and access to there, um, the palace I inherited wasn't in the best of form. So there has been a major um, push to try to redesign the palace. Wow. And uh, I want to credit one of the princes, yes, well. who is called, who engineer Oliver Achaleke. Okay. Uh, he is resident in Buya. And he's the one who has been designing, uh, leading wow. that, 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 that 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 concern, that desire okay. to to try to redesign the Atobechi Palace. Yes. So what is the stage now of the construction? Uh, yeah. Many of the buildings yes, I inherited have been broken down. Yeah, have been pulled yes. away and I redone. Okay. Yeah, and replaced. Wow. Yes. But we are still the process is still it's ongoing. Still Unfortunately, uh, the war started. Oh, the Amazon. Uh, yeah, you know, this, where we come from, is in the former British Southern Cameroons. Yes, well. That we now call Amazonia. Yes, well. Yeah. So because of this war, it has retarded. Oh, it. yes. Oh, yes. Oh, many projects have been retarded. Oh. Uh, we've had a water project, huge water project. Yes, well. That was, again, um, led by the senior prince of this palace, Dr. Ekokobe Fonkem. Uh, I think he spent upwards, upwards of $25 million on the water project. Uh, but then that water project is only part of what we plan on doing because he again initiated the Fonkem Lekeanyi Memorial Medical, Medical Hospital. Center. Yes. Okay. So he, the plan is to build a hospital near near the palace. Wow! Uh, and so we it, again that 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 project was started. Okay. Um, the foundation was already done. So if the war had not started, 
that project will be going so well now. Um, from 2014, Therefore. he had started taking teams, medical teams, to Adobe Jet for two weeks every year. Wow. So that, that's a big project that we have. Uh, hopefully when the war is over, we will continue, yeah, continue. with the project. And, but that's not even all there is. Um, yes, for the, the ecotourism. Oh, the ecotourism. Yeah, that's quite impressive. Uh, so your kingdom is going to have an ecotourism where people can fly from abroad or from Germany, from Europe. Yes, and, and, people, and see yeah, nature. And see nature yes. as it is. The green, oh, the mountains. The animals. The animals, the scenic beauty. Oh, and so, perfect. yeah, we, the ecotourism project is will be a wonderful one. But then, again, because of the war, the we can go along with that. Oh, my God. Um, and the museum? And then, the museum, yes. Wow. Uh, the late from Camp McKinney was a, a wonderful, wonderful person. Oh. He didn't only uh, reign in um, a very unique manner. Yes, sir. He left a legacy. A legacy of lots of things in terms of divination, healing powers, um, 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 to come and see. And we started that already with uh, a big statue of him, okay. which is already there. We intend to bring in many of the things he used, That's cool. many photographs wow. and many things and uh, we are also planning yes, well. that the museum will be for education purposes okay because in my in my in my reign yes, well. the legacy is education wow we have i was impressed to see that you are one of the in fact i think the only uh is uh, where it, his uh, his uh, imperial uh, majesty who has a logo Education, <laughs> unity. Oh, you've seen the I've logo seen, of yes, this yes, kingdom? Yes. Okay. Education, unity, and uh, dignity. Dignity and unity. Wow, yes. that's quite. Ed, beginning with education. That's the. You, you have made it a priority yes. in your reign. Yes. Wow. Yeah. And you are an example for anybody in your kingdom to follow because you have set the example. Uh, well, not just me. Yes, well. I think the late chief, the late uh, ruler saw the importance of education okay and so he sent me to good schools okay and uh, have done well my in green corner yes i also discovered your green corner is exceptional in green corner is exceptional doctor. educator uh she research. she she studied education in universities in cameroon okay israel canada and the united states yes, that's what i discovered yeah, so she, she she has a variety of degrees. Dear viewers, she's called Dr. Patricia. No, Patience. Patience, sorry. Yes. <laughs> I was confused, Patience and Patricia. Yes. I'll be forgive me. So Dr. Patience, a Willisane Fountain. Yeah. She, when is she, is she around? She has had experience all over the world. She has been to Cameroon where she was born, Canada, Israel, USA. Yes. She has a Bachelor in Education. A bachelor in child psychology, mm -hmm. a master's in uh, teacher uh, education, yes. a master's in special education, course uh, categorical, categorical mm -hmm. and a PhD in curriculum, in curriculum and, and instruction, instruction leadership. leadership. Yes. So this is this is a very a, a distinguished kingdom well, of Atlantis. She is a showcase for us. I am very proud. She is a wonderful example for all the women exactly. and the daughters and the sons and everybody in the kingdom to follow. Wow. She's a wonderful leader in Christ. education. In yes. Christ. Yes. This is a distinguished kingdom. And we have uh, the young people who are getting up to... Yeah, the princess. Yeah. Dr. Kokobel. Oh! Your son is distinguished. He's one of the most brilliant medical doctors we have in the United States. I think from Cameroon. It's, it's a big blessing. I've read a lot about yeah. him yeah. about all his uh, researches. Yes. And I'm so proud he's your son. We are, for any example. We, we are very thankful to God. <laughs> yeah. So and she's not the only one. She there's other ones are nurse practitioners and oh, that's impressive. own their own practices. Okay. The others they are princesses who are registered nurses oh, wow. and studying for higher qualifications. Wow. The other princesses who are we have one 
who is in becoming um, who is studying for a master's in biomedical engineering. Wow. We have other undergraduates around as we speak. Yes, well. In this uh, palace, there are about eight students in the university. I'm so impressed. As we speak well. now. I'm so impressed. Yes. I'm so impressed. So for us. Greencom and me, our plan is that education, education will is be the legacy. Wow. Yes. Wow. I'm so impressed that uh, despite the fact that in the United States you've kept on with this legacy, the culture. Dear viewers, I am presently in the uh, Atorabishi Palace in uh, the Wisconsin. Inner palace. The yeah. inner palace. Yeah. So yeah. I'm the very, They call it in Tima. In Tima. I'm in Tima right now. So yeah. you can see the cultural aspect that it depicts. We have a uh, uh, His Imperial Majesty here, who is not only a traditional leader, but also a distinguished professor, full-time professor at the University of Wisconsin. And that takes me to my next question. Okay. I've read a lot of articles that you've written. You're oh, a prolific uh, writer. Thank you. When did this uh, passion for writing begin? I, I've always been a writer. Okay. Um, from my undergraduate days, yes, I was writing. And when I started my graduate program in Korea, there was a, a professor there called Charles Nama, okay. who had studied at NYU okay. and found that when I wrote essays, they were spectacular for him. Okay. And so that from that encouragement, I've always been trying to write and publish. But my spouse, yes. Dr. Fonkami, encouraged me to <laughs> complete uh, a PhD because when you write and publish without a three letter word PhD behind your name, yeah, people, people don't take you seriously. Exactly. And so, thanks to her, went to I went PhD back program. to school and I have been writing. That's quite impressive. Um, if you see, you are impressed by what I've written and published. You have, I forget, for example, the decline of Lefua in where? February 2020. Yeah. The refugee and migrant crisis. Um, uh, human tragedies as an extension of colonialism, deliberative dialogue as a, t as a teaching stroke learning experience in higher education. I can keep on reading and reading. There are more than 40 titles, titles of articles he has written. Uh, Those are the ones that are published. You are don't published. even know the ones I'm working on published, currently. Published, so. published, published. <laughs> and he has ongoing publications, yes. for example, The Persistent Conflict and Violence Amidst an Abundance of peace speeches and meetings, a critical perspective on peace. Yes. So we have been rising up, people have been talking about peace, but people keep dying every day. So this article is going to be really breaking. Right. I really look forward to, read, to reading it. And then you have the conflict, intractability, and the need to decolonize international mediation mm -hmm. in the post-colonial world. Yes. Wow. This is quite interesting. Yeah, well, when you talk of international mediation, yes, well. <laughs> what takes place? Is still very colonially framed. Okay. Somebody still has to come from somewhere Can you imagine that? and tell you that what you are doing to your brother is wrong. That's why I'm saying that we need to decolonize <laughs> international <laughs> mediation in such that it works in the interest of the people in conflict. Exactly. Not in the interest of the big powers that come to do the mediation. If you see, if you study international mediation in Africa, yes, well. be it in Mozambique or in Namibia or Eritrea or wherever there's been conflict, the mediators yes, are always, always the former colonial powers. Yes, that's so, yes. That's really, that's really, I think that's a scandal. Well, we should solve that our comes from Well, that comes from the nature of the kind of independence that we had. It's, it looks like we didn't have independence. We well, keep going back to them, yeah. and they come back, they don't understand the situation, right. for example, so the present crisis back home. And that is why there is the need to decolonize what is going on. You've written a lot about the present uh, conflict war, mm -hmm. especially that is, that is, uh, that is hindering, uh, that is hindering the progress of, for example, or the, the project you're having back home. Uh, is hindering. Well, my area of expertise yes, is... Well. I'm a conflict scientist. That takes me to my next question. You yes. specialize in yeah, my, PhD. Yeah, my, my area, my, my background is in conflict analysis. I'm a conflict analyst. And resolution. Well, so I study conflicts and an, analyze them. Wow. So that's why my, in, as an academic, yes, well. that is my focus. 
Yeah. I'm so impressed. Yeah. And you've had a lot of publications. Oh yeah. From uh, for example, you have the the DLM issues and challenges at centuries. End, End. 1999. Okay. Oh, that was a book published quite a long way. <laughs> yeah. I'm quite impressed. Then there's another one you published. I have a long list here, which I can't. Uh, you have the. Uh, Le Bois in Libya. Le Four. Le Four, sorry. Le Four in Libya. Decline or Transformation. Yeah, 2006. Yeah, I'm very concerned about the, the decline in traditional institutions of Le Four which for me yes, for. are central to the culture of the people. Exactly. Yeah, so I, I have a major article that I wrote in 2002 or 2000, yes, sir. which was titled The Decline of the Poor in Muay Land. So it has been yeah. declined, people are no longer recognizing uh, it. Yeah, and that and article is published in London okay, cool. in a website uh, by Father Vincent Lockhart, and if you went to www.leblm.info, yes, okay. you'll find that article. And yes, because of that, I published that article. Yes, I was encouraged to go on further in 2006 to do the book. Oh, wow. Yeah. So quite impressive. Mm -hmm. So this is really something serious. So in your book, you're trying to enlighten uh, worldwide, especially the Africans, to value their culture yeah that's my goal uh but the book is a kind of a debate yes for is is it declining yeah or, or is it just changing some people think that it is changing i feel it is declining and that's sad and for the people who think it's changing i keep asking them in what direction okay right so so the book has two sides to the argument then you got a wonderful book on British Southern Cameroons, Nationalism and Conflict in Post-Colonial Africa, 2014. Yeah. What were you trying to... Well, you, if you know the conflict in Cameroon that has ended up in this, in this war, massacre. you would realize that it did not just start. That book was published before the war. Exactly. And people did not understand it. Or maybe... <laughs> Well, that same book, yes, for. which used to sell for $27, now sells for $907. Because people are going to eat to understand. Because it is because of the research. Wow. The conflict has been on yes, for. probably since the so-called joining, independent by joining. As a matter of fact, Von Lund yes, for. wrote Von Lund. about the uneasiness yes. of the... British Southern Cameroon's party yes, by 1963-64. Wow. So the conflict has been festering, okay. has been simmering hmm. for decades. I mean, some people think that it started in 2016. No, no it, it only escalated in 2016. And again, the leadership of yes, Cameroon sir. didn't take advantage of that. And the international community didn't it's take not. advantage. They rather depicted it as English and French fighting in Cameroon. Can you imagine that? <laughs> it's not two languages. Two languages cannot fight. Two languages cannot. are parts of two cultures. cultures totally language is a part of culture. We, we, in, in language studies, we say those who speak two languages are equal to two people. That's true. Because no language is a translation of another language. No. They're totally distinct. They are distinct. The, the, the world view is different. And that's why if you want to know, yes, well. try something like I'm hungry. I hear you speak Spanish, right? Yes, well. So how would you say in Spanish, I'm hungry? In Spanish, you say, tengo hambre. What does it mean? I have hunger. <laughs> <laughs> See, have. in English, yes, well. you, don't, you don't have hunger. No, in English, say, it am. is a state in you. Where do you come from again? Well, I was born in Cameroon. So I'm... how do you say it in your mother tongue? <laughs> how do you say I'm hungry? Well, I'm hungry. I would say in fact, boom. No, no. In fact, says I want, I want to, to eat. eat. It doesn't mean you are hungry. You can eat even when you are not hungry. Okay. So how do you say I'm hungry? <laughs> now I'm just trying to tell you how people who speak different languages, languages. live in different worlds That's true. and see the world differently. Mm. So in Bangwan, 
in where you say nji seko eh? okay i don't even know how to interpret that okay nji seko okay. <laughs> eh? okay let's try to take something again yes for the sun sets now at 6 pm how would you say that in spanish in spanish el sol the sun set at 6 pm mm -hmm. to set you can say el sol se ve a las a las 6 de la tarde okay what would that what would you be saying word for word word for word would be the sun will show up at 6 pm okay <laughs> um um try i hear you speak french too <laughs> yeah. say it in french so the sun set at 6 pm will be le soleil well there are many ways of saying that no 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 there's one way <laughs> i can say le soleil se lève but no 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 the, the sun cannot... sets the soleil se lève say the sun rises. rises so the sun says le soleil le soleil se couche se couche okay just like it sleeps it goes to bed <laughs> The soleil se couche yeah, as a uh, disputer. Uh -huh. okay. So you begin to see the English is seeing the sun setting. Okay. The French is seeing the sun going to sleep or to bed. Wow. I don't know what the Spanish is seeing. The Spanish is saying le el sol. Uh -huh. But in Spanish you can't say that the sun is going to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. So you begin to see that. People who speak different languages have live in different worlds true. completely. That's true. And <laughs> how do I say it? Uh, in in where? Yes, what true. do we say? Your bang. Wow. The sun. So bang is like color. Yes. It's like color. Uh, it's, it's reddening. Exactly. Your sun bang or your bang. The sun has turned red. Yes. You see, it's setting. That's what we say. Wow. So you can now understand that those who started. Yes, well. by pushing a linguistic um uh, linguistic um a linguistic vision as factor vision of the war yes well. did not do a good thing to the different parties okay because they were minimizing the culture a protracted it. nature of a conflict that had been simmering yes well. since independence by joining because the concept itself independence by joining makes no sense you cannot accede to independence by joining another person it independence doesn't make you sense. become autonomous yes so you <laughs> cannot become autonomous by joining another person no 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 and by the way yes sir well. the concept itself was not was against the principles of the UN that turn around and prescribe that notion oh because the un in its chapter 76b yes what well. is about people's independence the un trusteeship agreement of 1946 is about nurturing the trust teeships okay. to independence Resolution 1514 of 1960 yes, of the United Nations General Assembly says grant independence to all colonial countries and peoples. Okay. So for the UN to have this resolution and turn around yes, and okay. grant independence to British Southern Cameroon mm. by joining mm. was a problem. Was a problem itself. To some extent the United Nations and Britain contributed cost cost the world they, they did not just contribute they cost, they cost it. it even though the un was formed yes well to preserve world peace exactly that's the aim that was why the un came to be hmm. so the ironically yes, they were causing the problem in the cameroons which is which is causing and the and the secretary of the united nations at the time yes well dak hamajo okay said this meeting uh, this independent by joining is like pushing a ball under water it will pop up someday. someday so this is really the truth about it i live in wisconsin the representative yes sir of wisconsin in the un in the, in the was a guy who said this is problematic 
Clement Zabloski said this was problematic. And it has become problematic. I think the Indian yes, delegate Manon said the same thing. And in Britain, the the the, the trust the trustee yes, of British Cameroons, because the UN was a trustor. In Britain, G.M. Thompson, representing Dundee East constituency, yes, said you can do that. Hmm. This is a problem. Wow. So the problem that many people ask today is, how come mm -hmm. with all these warnings, they still kept, they still the Britain and the UN insisted on independence by joining? And there has been even a student, yes. uh, somebody, Rod Cod Gorbata, yes, a writer, a, a, a philosopher, wow. <laughs> who said Britain and France had been next door neighbors for millennia in Europe. Okay. They never attempted joining. Never. So why should they? Why do you come to Africa and, and join that? a former uh, a French, French. <laughs> group of people and a former British group of people? Aren't you setting them to fight? And this is what we are we are, we are living today. No, what you're saying is totally true because many people have pronounced this totally. True. Because the visions are different of how they want to organize community. The vision, the culture, the way Yeah, because of even if we were going to stop or end the war, they will still, people will still not understand each other and be together. Okay. Or live in, in peace and harmony. There, there is something about patriotism. Yes, for Patriotism comes from the heart. It's not imposed on no, anybody. Never. Something passionate. Yes. And that's why people in conflict studies, yes, well. those are the kind of conflict that people are ready to give their lives for. Yeah, because they, they're very and they, they, We call them identity conflicts. Wow. I'm saying they are the most protracted of conflicts wow. that we study. Well, I'm really impressed by your, your erudite, you're giving an erudite in the matter, in the, in the, in the question. Conflict resolution. Well, that really is my impressed. background. So. Really so there's this wonderful book, Kind Second Chances and Human Services, Creating a Pathway to Ordinary Life for the Convicted. This was 2019 that you wrote this book. Yeah, it's a very recent book. Wow. Um, living in the United States, yes, I discovered something which is pretty strange. When, when once an individual has a criminal record, that individual Has is no pushed to the to the fringes. I, I observed that. You book. can you can get a job. Oh my you God. cannot vote. Oh. You 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 you. There are so many things, things you do. that you can do when you have a criminal record. Oh my God. And so my question yes, in the book is, um, why don't we give human beings a second? Chance. Or even a third chance. Exactly. If somebody committed a crime yes, well. and paid his due to the to the public by going to prison for ten years, yes, well. when he leaves, yes. we should give them a second chance. chance. The Pope Pope Francis yes, well. has written and talked a lot about this. That's true. He says that all of us as human beings we have our, our hands dirty. That's true. There is no one whose hands are not dead. I have quoted the Pope in that book several. But the Pope really wrote on mercy and that. He mercy. says that we should learn that all of us have had our hands dirty or can have our hands dirty. Pope Francis, he himself Pope Francis. and said, I'm a sinner. Yeah. And so uh, my question I live in Wisconsin yes, well. and work here. And in the in the in the winter like this, many people's cars go into ditches. Okay. And in Wisconsin, yes. people have neighbors to pull out the, the, their, their cars, cars from, from the, the ditches. ditches. Wow. But strange enough, yes, well. America, as a country, 
yes. the richest country in the face of the earth, yeah. one of the biggest, the yes. strongest, mm. they have not learned Therefore. to pull people out of the ditches. Exactly. Why do they do it with cars but not to human beings? They can do it to cars of neighbors but not to hum human beings. That's quite and that is why we wrote the book wow. about crime, second chances. And, and human services, and human creating services. a pathway to ordinary life for yes. the convicted. How can we give wow. the convicted or I mean, people who have been convicted ordinary life? I mean, this is a country where nobody gives you a free lunch. No. So, if somebody has a family, yes, go away from him, and then has fallen. That's true. And then you can't give him a chance to work. How does he even begin to feed his family? Oh my God, that is so sad. This is the problem in that book. Yeah, that, how does, where does he even begin? Where does he begin? You cannot vote, means you can, you can you choose, can your, choose leaders. your leaders. You can work, means you can feed yourself oh my God. or your family. your family. Wow, this is serious. So, so how do you do it? How, how do you how live? Do you live? Those are the questions in the book. Yeah. Very impressive. I'm currently working on two other books. Yes, one. Um, refugees, first Me, migrant, migrants, and, and human, human tragedies. And interdisciplinary. I, 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 I'm looking at um, in 215. Yes, one. After the Syrian crisis yeah. began, yeah. and mass massive numbers of people started flogging into Europe. That's true. And tens and thousands of people have died in the Mediterranean. Let's see. In fact, the Pope, when we made public the first page he visited. The and the way. question is, again, you hear, the refugees, yes, forced migrants, yes, and human tragedies. Yes. Because people are leaving their homes not because they want it. No. They are being forced, forced. away. By what? By wars. That's true. Like the present situation in, in Cameroon. In Cameroon or in Syria or in Libya or... And why the wars? Yes, sir. Because of the colonial nature of those countries. Because one of the papers I've written yes, sir. is engaging the colonial factor in African countries. The colonial factor is very, 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 very important in most of the conflicts because colonialism drew arbitrary boundaries. Yes. Some countries are fighting about that. Colonialism brought some strange bedfellows together, like in the Cameroons. Yes. People are fighting about it. Exactly. Um, uh, in other places, colonialism was very repressive. The nature of independence happened yes. that the new regimes in those countries are just an extension of the colonial experience to the oh, people. Exactly. <laughs> and so, just for an this, example this is what we're talking, that's what, that's the focus of that article. Wow. Engaging the colonial factor in African conflicts. This is powerful, mm -hmm. it's really powerful. I'm really, really uh, impressive now. I'm really grateful for your intellectual capacity and contribution to knowledge. Thank you. It's not easy to write an article and you've written Countless books yes, and articles. And tons, right. It's right. an example for, for for the others to follow, and I'm really impressed. I thank God, God Almighty the, for the lady God placed by me. Okay. Because she's the one. Without the peace of mind, you can't put together ideas. No, you can't. To put together ideas into art, scholarly articles exactly. or books, <laughs> you need some peace of mind. Wow. And my wife. When I'm writing, she knows I'm writing. And, gives you and generally, I would ask her, can you take a look at this? And she does. And, and brings in a lot of feedback because she, she's more analytical than I am. Wow. So the, the patience from Kim is exceptional. I'm so grateful. Yeah. We thank you. We know you're listening to us. Thank you for, for this wonderful uh, opportunity, academic contribution and traditional to which you are, uh, which you are. The, the, this the pace we are setting for a future generation. She Thank actually so designed where we are sitting. Wow. Yes. 
the viewers, as you can see, this yes. is the palace of a tree in the this, United States. She designed what you're saying. She it looks so this. beautiful, yeah. uh, his uh, royal imperial. It looks so beautiful. I really like the the, the representation, the traditional uh, artifacts. Uh, wow. Yeah. Did she you designed it? it. And you brought it all the way from Cameroon? Yeah. From the kingdom, yes. <laughs> Interesting. Because traditionally, where the king is, is a kingdom. Exactly. Wherever he is. Yes, wherever he himself. is. Yes. So grateful. So if people hear that I'm a king and they come here and they can't find it. Yeah. Then. <laughs> appropriate, then there's something wrong. Oh. <laughs> I'm sure that was the thinking behind her mind. I see. Yeah. It's Imperial Majesty, I'm so grateful for this, uh, this powerful... Uh, uh, enlightenment which are given to the public many people don't know about the uh, the books you've written the articles is going to in it's going to instill in kindle in the minds of such a young men who are so passionate about culture like myself to read those books and and cite them and make them know i want to go to a different there, there's one there is one on fumban that has been read by almost thirteen thousand people across the world May I know that is the topic. When constitutional talks and prior intentions of negotiating. Wow, so you went into it and analyzed yep. and criticized. And the, and, the, and, the, and the ramifications for what is happening today. Wow. Yeah. Impressive. Yeah, it is right all over the world. And I think Kinesau <laughs> University, yes, Kinesau State in, in, um, in Georgia. Yes, for keeps track of, of who is downloading the and reading the article wow. and reports back I think I about saw, twice every month. I think I saw that that has been read all over the world, yeah. you know, almost all the continents. Yes. Because now with the crisis, people are trying to yeah, read, to understand, researchers yeah. are trying to understand the mm -hmm. problem and your book is yeah. really... It's a major contribution to negotiation studies. It's a masterpiece. Yeah. It's so proud of you. And apart from that, uh, for you are a very very uh, famous king because you're not just in one place for example you have had a lot of you 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 presented the seda Senghor award award kelani to the renowned nigerian film producer in july 2019 yes wow so you're really a world traveler well i think so i try to you see from the bit i wear yes for. you can see some extension here Oh, right. Um, the red ones are Bini beads. Oh, okay. these are from the Edo Kingdom of Bini. Okay. Uh, these ones are Ghanaian. Yes, for. And these ones are Mwe beads. Okay. So, I'm trying. Um, the late king did not know that the world extended beyond Cameroon and Nigeria, possibly because I went to school in Nigeria. Okay. But I'm, so I'm extending uh, part of kingship yes well. is relationships that's true connection far and wide oh. and uh, i'm extending the kingdom to far away south africa wow i'm extending westwards yes well. to ghana and beyond uh, my next vision is to get to the gambia wow and so uh, yeah i was invited to do that there is a famous uh, professor, great professor, Toin Falola, okay. one of the greatest Africanist scholars that I know. Oh. It's a friend of mine and who invited me to do mm. that. And the university, of, uh, Babcock University invited me to do that presentation. Wow, that's yeah. quite impressive. So and Tunde Kilani. Tunde Kilani is the famous film producer in Nigeria. Yeah. So he won the Seda Leopold Seda Single Award, okay. which I personally flew there and handed and presented, it to you. Yes, presented wow. it to him. You make us very proud Thank by you. your presence in these countries. Thank you. And you have a particular relationship, a very special relationship with the with the fun of uh, Nguyen. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I've seen many lovely pictures with him. Oh, the, oh, right. You see, this is the first photo of Nguyen with whom I was very, very. Who was my very good friend, he was elderly, okay. he was my very good friend, and um, wow. 
you can see this picture is taken in the palace in Kwen. Yes, sir. Uh, when the fund transitioned, yes, sir. I think it was in November. I was here. Yes. I wasn't at the 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 enthronement, the enthronement of the man. new one. Okay. And so I, you can see from this picture. Yes, sir. When I returned home, yes. I invited these other funds of Bali, uh, Bali Kumbad, Bali Gashu, okay. and Lenaren them wow. to to go and meet the, the young fun. Wow. And from then we have been very good friends. Very good friends, yes. Yeah, community builder, yes. you always want to yeah. impress it. And you were in Lagos in June to attend the conference of Obas. Yes, uh, again, <laughs> we're, we're uh, doing a, 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 there was a conference yes, well. on um, the Yoruba. The language and literature and everything and yes. i was there and lots of uh um Obash were there wow. yes so mm -hmm. that's how i was out there that's very impressive yeah and then uh, you talk about the the, the, the linkages with the front of bali gashu uh, front, bali of gashu. Bukwen, front of bali kumbar and front of lena linden yes so you're a man of linking, you're a man of connection with other, well, other kings. Yeah, well, I grew up in Sop Palace. Okay. And so I was raised in Sop. And wow. so I have I still have a very good connection with Sop too. That's quite impressive. It's been sometimes when the Sop people here have a, a gathering. Cultural events. Yes, they would invite, they invite me. you. Yes. Very impressive. Yeah. And you've met the the, the president Tabot uh, Mbeki of uh, of South Africa. Oh uh, yeah, well. I saw a picture with him. Oh yes, oh Very yes. Impressive. I was in Pretoria in July two thousand and fifteen. Wow. Yes. That's in South Africa. I, I, I was there for the the two thousand and fifteen International Africa Conference. Wow. Yes, when I met. President That's very impressive. Thank you. I heard some rumors that you're writing a memoir about your life. I can't wait to, to buy that book. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm writing already. And the entire thing is going to be titled The Path I Told. Yes, The, the Path I Told. Dear yeah. viewers, we look forward uh, enthusiastically to, to read that memoir. It's going to yeah, be, I, I, to I can't do. wait to read the I'm anecdotes. To do that. It's gone through from Cameroon, Nigeria, yeah. and the United States, yeah. and other countries. And what I've gone through in my life. Powerful. Nothing easy came my way. Oh my God! Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. So for from your experience, uh, the experience you've, you've, you've gone through in Cameroon, Nigeria, and the United States, nothing easy, nothing good comes easy. So you can assert to that adage. Yes. Wow. In terms of my own life. Okay. You've been uh, misinterpreted by many. Oh uh, yeah. Even when you have good intentions. You're right. I don't doubt that. Getting to the university was an uphill task. Oh but, my god. Uh, I finished with a BA first class. I yes, was sir. awarded a scholarship to do a PhD and teach. Yes, sir. I never got that. It never went through. Oh. I never got that. I never even got the PhD until several years down the road. Oh my god. Uh, when I, I, I got yes, well. into a master's program, the guy I selected to read, yes. my, my yeah, supervisor, yes, well. uh, was some elderly guy okay. and wasn't reading anything. Oh my God. I finally had to have a second and a third reader oh. before I got the master's. Can you imagine? Uh, that was my second master's. Okay. Uh, and then in the PhD degree, I went to defend, yes, well. and, and it was again very problematic. Oh my God! Because my major professor was in Oslo at the oh Peace God. Institute. Can you imagine? So it wasn't uh, possible. A, a, a walk in the park. Uh, so it's been tough. The things I've gotten, uh, even at the university, rising from assistant professor to Oof. tenure, wasn't that easy. easy. At, at, at one point in my life, yes, well. uh, it was like, uh, if you want the story, I can tell you a little bit. No, please, I'm very interested <laughs> in the story. You, so 
that you, we could you, learn. You can't believe you can't believe that when you begin life as an assistant professor, professor. you are hired tenure track. Okay. So every year, yes, you are you are reviewed yes. and renewed. Yes. The reviewing and renewing, renewing is how is your teaching going? Okay. How is your service record in the university? And how is your publishing record? Okay. So my first review after one year yes, went through flying course. Oh. Most university professors or, or assistant professors are renewed one year at a time. Yeah. They are giving you time to maybe improve on your teaching yes, well. or improve on your service exactly. or improve on your publications yes, or research and publications. And you have books and articles yeah. already. So at the end of the first year, yes, well. I wasn't given one year, I was renewed for three years. Wow. Which was superb. Exceptional. Exceptional, that's the word. Wow. Then when I came up for the second re renewal yes, or review, yes, <laughs> I received a letter saying, you do not meet expectations for teaching scholar uh, scholarship and service. And what for that reason, we cannot renew. What a contradiction. <laughs> well, and that is the politics of the university. Oh. How did you go through that, well, that ordeal? It was an ordeal. Oh, indeed. First, it took me by surprise because in all the three compartments, yes, service, teaching, yes, scholarship, I was not just good, I was exceptional in some places. Absolutely. But these senior members of my department they were uncomfortable. <laughs> they were uncomfortable. <laughs> With their success, yeah, yeah. it happened. I don't know. It's I remember a guy that I leaned on. Yes, well. Each time I published a new article, I, I brought it to him and said, Look, I got that new article. Get an, yeah. And the guy said, Keep churning them. I didn't oh, know yeah. that he was being sarcastic. Wow. I thought I was leaning on someone, someone who, who, who admired and appreciated who, uh, the work I was yeah, doing. Yeah, but he was the one who wrote and said, this guy does not meet expectations for teaching. For all the, all the, and what was surprising is yes, when you try to do harm or evil yes. to somebody, somebody without justification, God still blesses, gives you a way to overstep your bounds. Because it doesn't happen. Okay. If you say somebody does not meet expectations in all the three, components yes, then how did you even hire the exactly person? and how do you renew the and first time three years not yes, one yes <laughs> so what 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 the heck exactly what 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 the heck what what we did what, so what was the point? so when i saw that and the university handbook says yes well. if you make such a decision on someone yes you've got to give them reasons written reasons written. so they just Send me that letter and thought, oh, I would just yeah, disappear. Just into, uh, oh, they didn't know the person so they were I, I asked them to please provide written reasons per article X, Y, Z of the of, faculty of. handbook. <laughs> this took them two weeks Can you imagine? to fish out what to use against you. It's got oh. me. <laughs> and when they gave me whatever they said it was, I yes. sat down. And, and responded to what they had written. 18 pages. Wow. And sent it back to the personnel committee requesting reconsideration. Yes, and the university procedure is that you don't ask for reconsideration if you are not sure of what you are saying. Exactly. Because yeah. studying somebody's file takes time. It does. And people don't want to do work and do the same work the same over, the same over and over. <laughs> so I asked for reconsideration. Okay. And those people went Into to serious? reconsideration and voted me down. Wow. Because there are three votes. Yes, well. They had two votes, and the rest of the committee members had one vote. Mm -hmm. So even if everybody voted yes and they voted no, no. I was still turned down. 
So when reconsideration yes, turned me down, yes, the chair of the committee said, well, I'm not a magician. Yes, sir. Everybody should put it in writing. Good. If for teaching you wanted, no, explain. Put it in writing. If uh, for service, yeah, put it in writing. And they wrote. Some people had nothing to write, <laughs> but they still wanted to know. Okay. Again, the nature of me. So when I got that, I petitioned the university senate. Yes, which is the highest academic body. Wow. So the Senate subcommittee was embarrassed. What does his uh, letter of expectation yes, say? The letter of expectation says between now and your next review, yes, submit at least one article to a renowned journal. Oh, no, to be published. <laughs> I published five. Exactly. Not I did not just submit. You published. They were already published. And a book. Can you imagine? <laughs> so, so what were they talking about? I didn't meet expectations. What expectations? So, <laughs> and they wow. threw it out. So the senate... Uh, and then they asked me, yes, are you still going to work with them? What was their response? Oh, yeah. I, I gave them a very good response. I told them that um, if God had wanted people to look back, Yes, well. You would have put a pair of eyes between behind the head. That's true. Because God did not put a pair of eyes behind, behind the head. And just God wanted us to keep looking forward. And that I was just going to be looking forward. I didn't I didn't come there to fight anybody. Exactly. I don't know what I did wrong. Wow. To any one of those people who didn't want my progress, I will just keep going. That's quite so, impressive. And I, I didn't even tell anybody. I simply ask the university that when it comes to my tenure, yes, I don't want them to make a pronouncement to my tenure. Okay. But when it did come, yes, the provost, who is the highest academic person, said, still submit, but we'll be looking. Wow. We know what they did, submit your papers. <laughs> then I submitted my tenure papers. Okay. It didn't take them five minutes to, yeah, yeah. to how do you call it, unanimously pass the papers. So, you've so I was promoted then again with difficulty. You've gone through tough times, oh, but yeah. you've always been patient, yeah. trust in God, and yeah. wow. My and when seniors. it came to full professorship, yes. Well, when did that happen? If I'm I uh, was that. Do you I, I, I forgot it, but then when it okay, came okay. to full professorship, yes. Well. When I when I, when I was due, the system had changed. It wasn't the system of hard copies. It was now very everything digital, and I'm not. I didn't grow up with digital, that. so exactly. we have, I've had a problem, okay. and so I wasted another year trying to yeah, but update. All that is behind. All that is history, and so we are most thankful to God. Mm -hmm. Full professorship in the in academia Can you imagine? is not. It's a not piece easy. Of cake. No, it's not. It's not, especially in a foreign country, the United well, States of America. Well. Yeah. Wow, I'm really, really impressed. You're not only a traditional ruler, a full professor, but you're a full the, professor. Yeah, and, uh, and 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 you still write and publish. Yeah, I continue to write and publish. Yeah, I'm so I good. think even when I eventually leave the university, I think I still you continue, continue to write. writing and publishing. Yeah. For so let's go to the to the to the, the last question on the election of a new bishop is from Cameroon. So why is Cameroon so special? Why is it that we always have special people from Cameroon? You know, the first bishop in the United States, African, from Cameroon. Um, and he's present in Cameroon for his time giving masses. Well, Cameroon is an exceptional country. Hmm. I think what has ruined Cameroon is politics, or the politicians. Not okay. even politics, okay. the politicians. The politicians. Yeah. And, and the nature of the independence okay. of that country. It was not well known. And the foundation... Yes, for wasn't well put. Hmm. Otherwise, yes, I mean, you hardly hear about floods or fires or earthquakes or very dangerous things apart from Nios, the Nios disaster. Uh, you don't hear so many bad things. That happened in 1956. Yeah, so Cameroon is a very blessed country. country. 
We are food self-sufficient. The weather is so good. so good. The soils are good. There's every blessing, every good thing there. Yes, so when I heard about the bishop, yes, it wasn't a surprise to me okay. that an individual of that caliber was from there. But um, in terms of um, the higher, the hierarchy of the Catholic Church, yes, I do not know the individual in person. Okay. I've never met him, I've never heard of him mm -hmm. until he's, he was made bishop. bishop. But I think, uh, I hear he's in the Virgin Islands, Islands. which is uh, here in the United States. Yes, sir. Um, I look forward to meeting him someday. Okay. Uh, I'd like to maybe visit him in the islands oh, or invite him to over palace. here to the palace. Wow. Uh, and when I get to know him, yes, hopefully uh, we might start exploring things that he might do. Exactly. Uh, but again, I say I don't know him as an as individual. Uh, but yes, he has gotten to a level where he can be a bridge. Exactly. Between, between his country and the United States. His country and the United yes. States. <laughs> between Africa and America. Exactly. He, I think he, he, he might, from a religious or a church perspective, yes, have, have found himself in a situation where he can play a major role in linking his exactly. people. Wow. I, this is just a thought. Okay, well, yes, I don't well. know. No, I'm going this to, is just a thought. I'm going know. to communicate with him. I'm going to let him know see in Amma. Yes. And uh, he is... I, I, he's a very open and outgoing person and a love of culture. Okay. It's his love of culture. Good. And he would be I'd like to meet him. I'm going to do the connection. Oh, that would be <laughs> nice. Thank you. So, for there's another question I wanted to ask you about greeting in yes. Bangwana. Uh huh. Normally in our land, we don't greet the, 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 the form, as it is called. A king is not greeted with the hands. Could you explain to me why? Uh, you don't just be the form yeah. and greet with your hands. Uh, well, Two things I need to say about that. Yes, sir. Uh, the word "fun" that yes. you use is uh, is 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 a borrowed word. That is not our culture. We don't have funs. Okay. In where we say "for." Oh, okay. Fun is a bamendat, oh. grass fields mm. uh, uh, terminology for "for." I see. Uh, it's been a little, I know, when Fontem, Fontem de Fang went to the House of Chiefs okay. in Buya, yes, uh, he returned with the fun title, okay. but it was, I'm told, yes, he saw the funds who came from Babenda, okay. Banso, Bikong, yes, uh, Bali, Bafut, and Mankon. Very imposing and arriving, and he was like, "Who is? Who are these people?" Mm. And he said, "There are some big chiefs from Bamenda." Okay. And he said, well, "He himself is a big chief from his own place too." <laughs> and so, well, the, there were some interpreters he used, okay. who were from his kingdom, yes. uh, uh, and they are all late now. One of them told me the story himself because he was one of the interpreters that was. Mr. E. A. Aka. Okay. And the other one was Mr. Manfred Ikafu Ashu. Okay. These two people from his kingdom yes, were headmasters in two of the biggest schools in West Cameroon. Wow. Ashu was headmaster of uh, government school Bota. Yes, hmm. And Aka was headmaster of CDC school Ekona which were the two biggest schools in West Cameroon in those days, by 1961. Okay. So they used, because their four was coming to the assembly, they would come and help interpret, because he didn't speak English. I see. And so that's how the origin came. Oh. But now <clears throat> it has become uh, a, title. <laughs> a title, and people even fight over it. Oh. If we're talking of where tradition, there is no fun in where. When I was a young man like you, yes. there was no fun. Oh. 
Everybody was four. Okay. That's the terminology. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> art culture. Art culture. If we're defending art culture, that's our cultural way. Okay. And four is the highest title in Wella. Okay. So, uh, uh, this fun thing is like, oh. And there are many fours. Of, yeah, well, and again, yes, th those are some, if you read my story about the, the decline of the four, okay. <laughs> it's because of the numbers. I mean, if you attended a, a cry die, yes, there are many more titled people than the ordinary people. That is a little, a little, a little not good for the image of the four. Exactly. <laughs> and maybe the, the four in Bermuda is that strong, the Grassfield region is that strong, mm -hmm. because they don't create it. Okay. We... They inherit. They, they don't even create new ones. You cannot go to Banso and hear that they were making a chief. Oh, or you cannot go to Bafu and hear that he was making a chief. chief. Like we do. Yes, so that is what has watered down our own so much so that there's this clamor for the title, the one you use. Um, that, that was an error you made. What was the question again? The question was on greeting. Oh, yes. Yes. Your question on and I made a mistake by using font, the font and, and that's font. why I capitalized yes, on Thank something. you for, yeah. for elucidating um, that point. Uh, traditionally in where yes. generally there is no bodily contact in as a way of greeting. Interesting. So how do people greet them? Well, if you if you met somebody along the path or something, yes, you 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 simply said the greeting by word of orally by word of mouth. Okay. You didn't touch them. You say, for example, uh, "Good morning, Alele." Alele. Mendaba. Okay. Uh, uh, and things like that. You up from afar, where are you coming from, oh. or where are you going? Oh, the conversations were like this. People didn't touch anybody. The, the touching yes, is a new practice which came probably yes, through colonialism. Because again, money is yes. like good morning. Oh, oh. That's where it came yeah. from. And in the West, somebody, when he's extending a hand to you, yes, he's sir. greeting you. Yes. Otherwise, they don't extend a hand exactly. to anybody. If you met somebody here for the first time, yes, you will not touch the person. Exactly. You will not even extend a hand to somebody yes. you didn't know yes. until you are introduced. But generally, we copy things and copy them wrongly. Wrong, yes. <laughs> so, oh. so that's how it became. So when you met the chief, yes, people put their hand by their mouth okay. and say, uh, uh, okay. or and things like that. Or the 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 hand clap. As I did. And, and you find your own place and sit. That was the way it was. So these handshakes yes, over which we fight today, today. It, it's a strange cost, custom too. So that is the way it was. Uh, uh, and one of the things that you may be learning yes. is that you do not refer to the chief in second person. If you came and the chief was in some place, you didn't say, oh, Bondia, okay. Bogaria. No, you didn't say that. You yeah. say, be, be. third person plural. Wow. They. That's like in French, vous. No, vous is second person plural. Okay, so it's going to be. They. They. Uh, uh. Il. Wow. That's how it is. As a matter of fact, when yes, I grew up in so when so people talk to me, yes, what? they say, how are they? Wow. They don't say, how are, are you? you? <laughs> no. Pick the, 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 yeah, the they, I told you that the, the, when once a four is crowned with the rituals of coronation, he is no longer an individual. He's not seen as a human 
no more. That's why nobody touches them again. Okay. Wow. In a tradition, that individual becomes a kekom. Hmm. A kind of a, a monster or a kind of a... Special being. Yeah, be, be higher than a being. Wow. Yeah, higher than human. He's no longer human. That's true. That is how it was. Hmm. But things have so changed. Change. When once somebody is crowned, the last person to touch him is the person who put some of the things I can say okay. on their bodies. Wow. After and then that, after that, nobody is expected to touch them again until death. Do them part. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry to use the word death because they don't die. Exactly. Until they escape. When they transition when they or transition. disappear. That's true. Again, the same group of people, the kingmakers who who, who touch them, that they, are, they return again to put the same stuff on their bodies and they touch them again. Wow, that's so powerful. That that depicts the, 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 the and the and the dignity. Right. Of being a king. <laughs> so that is I don't know where you got the question from, but this is how culturally now that has been. Work. If you if you came yes, well. to the palace you stood there, most people don't come to where the king even is. Wow. I, I, there was, I, I was in uh, Canada recently. Yes, ma'am. You see a picture that I took with a muffle from so That's true. They are bending down. They don't even stand up. Wow. Okay. They are bending. That depicts the respect that shows. Yes. That, our... that is the way it is. But in our own place, everything seems to be, have been watered, watered down, down so much because everybody has become a poor. No, <laughs> to, a... to, so to, so to speak. That's a big, uh, we have to really go back to our culture and, and respect it because it is who we are. A, young, to. a friend of mine yeah. once said, well, when you said the forehead decline, you had not even seen anything. Okay. It, it's getting worse by the day. I hear you. And, uh, yeah, so, yeah. So what advice do you have for the young people who are listening to us? Oh, uh, well, the let them of, learn. Okay, culture. Mm, they are lucky to sit in an, an interview like this. Yeah that they learn uh, and that uh, they need to know that in the palace or oh, culture is generally handed down very informally that's true through occasions like this or someone asking questions and getting answers and let them also be curious wow. let them learn to ask to know uh, and mm -hmm. to follow and be uh, there was a prince, there was something happening here, and I, I told the prince that he was going to to carry this spear. This is a very special spear in this palace. Okay, cool. This 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 is what I used to 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 to, to start major events. Wow. And uh, on that day he didn't even show up. Oh. <laughs> so he doesn't know what he was missing. Exactly. So maybe the young people need to have exactly. their own curiosity exactly. and to be a little more um, you know learning comes from motivation it is yeah, more so motivated. I, I would think that individual young people should be motivated to learn about their cultures even though uh, for some of them who are in abroad yes, they don't have the opportunities to to learn a lot but, but they can read and they can still read yeah. they can they can they, they as long as they have interest wow. i think they will do well yes his imperial majesty you have distinguished yourself not only as a traditional ruler but an academician mm -hmm. of high repute. thank wow. you and education is part of the legacy you want to leave behind yes why do you think education is is primordial um it's primordial because learning stays with the individual. Learning is not something you can hand to a child. I'm not going to hand my degrees to a young man like that. But what he learns yes, well. is what he gets. Uh, the late, my late father, yes, well. the one on whose place I'm occupying, wow. who said, in dying, he said, I am... A, a tiger on dying I'm going to leave a tiger on the throne wow. he 
he he didn't invest in cocoa farms and coffee plantations like the rest of our people. He invested in us. I'm excelling, like you say, yes. all across the world you because have. of the knowledge exactly. I have. That have. So that's why I think for all the children God has blessed me with, I will do the best I can to educate them to as far as they are willing to go. And you are doing it already. I'm saying prep by your children are all specialists in, in well in engineer, in healthcare, in, medical in law. Can you imagine? Yeah, in everything. So uh, I, I, I must be very thankful to God, particularly for where we live. Yes, uh, I'm thankful to God who led us to where we live, yes. where the kids have excelled That's and good. continue to excel. Uh, I think God has been very kind. He has been. We've attended the highest mm -hmm. height in academia and in tradition. Mm -hmm. So what else do you need to say? <laughs> all, all I did is just to tell God. Majesty. All I did is just to say thank you to God wow. for blessing me abundantly. And you are doing it through all the projects you are, yeah. we have just spoke about, spoken about, and uh, it's quite impressive. I'm really grateful for all you do. Thank you. And uh, dear viewers, if you are touched by this interview, I know I have many friends over there in Mexico, in Germany, all the countries I've been to in Italy. You can support. The projects of the Atabeche Kingdom, Kingdom, Kingdom mm -hmm. which uh, I'm going to actually write a very special article about this interview, and I'm going to put in the website of that uh, of, of, the, of, the, of the of the kingdom. It's one of the kingdoms that are distinguished itself with the website. You can imagine, if you go there, you're going to read the literature, you're going to learn a lot about culture. I was going through it today, and I just couldn't leave the place. I said, "Wow, this is impressive." So dear viewers, don't forget, be passionate about culture, uh, go to that website which I'm going to post because most of you follow me on social media and please, if you are touched to support, don't stop to support it. education for the future of the children. Thank it's you. Imperial Majesty, I would like you to, 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 to bless us because you are, you are, you are, you are, you have a lot of powers, I know you do, and I know ancestral powers bless, yes bless us with your, yes with your fofo i know you i i, I believe a lot in in uh, we, we we came from a culture and uh, the problem the missionaries did where they came and they wanted to destroy culture no no no, no. For john paul ii came here and talk of inculturation yes and that's why I, I, you remember when we talked i told you that every culture has a reason for doing what it does uh, I don't criticize anybody's culture, yes, sir. Uh, but I try to uphold mine. Okay. Yeah. So there's. I'm going to bring you for food. It's a substance okay, well. that was handed down to for you. leadership. Oh, okay. Yes. So this brings harmony and peace and love and sound sleep. Um, um, You've always been a promoter of peace. Yes. Through your studies, academic studies, and you're up to the task. Thank you. And I'm so proud of you. Thank you for saying that. Thank you, sir. Really proud of you. So, dear viewers, we have here something very special that uh, His uh, Imperial Majesty is going to. This cup was. Yes was handed to me yes, and all the rulers of this kingdom have used this cup and so it keeps being handed down I will hand it over to okay. and it contains this powder yes, I'm going to eat a little bit of it I invite you oh, thank you invite you to yeah, yeah, take it and eat it and every other person and then, can, can you can you can you yeah. you know, my father used to do this to me before I went to school. Yeah, you you asking for a blessing. Exactly. This is a blessing from the palace. Wow, thank you. Yes, I'm so grateful. Yeah, you're very welcome. <laughs> thank you for asking for it. Obviously. 
Because I, I because can't I might, forget. I might, I might not have <laughs> remembered. My father always did this before we went to school. Before we went to travel. Every, every, travel in, a, in a culture, every family yes, had cousin. Okay. I see. Yes. The, uh, when your father dies, yes, he will yes. hand his own cup to his next of kin. Wow. Yes. And I'm so impressed to know that my father was named after your father. Yes. Can you imagine was. that? He was. Your name, Leket, yes, is my father's name. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, he was named after father. Dear viewers, it was an honor to be with uh, His Imperial um, Majesty Fonkem Achenken the first. He is the Anyatema of Atuabechi, yes, and uh, professor, full professor and ruler of the Atuabechi Kingdom. Yes, so Thank you. it has been an honor to be with him. I have learned a lot and I know that you have learned a lot, especially his uh, willingness to collaborate with uh, Bishop Fergio, Jerome Fergio, the new bishop of uh, the first African native bishop from Cameroon in the United States of America. So thank you for listening and uh, please keep in touch and uh, this Imperial Majesty has blessed us already. Thank you. I'm so grateful. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. This is very important. <laughs> so, dear viewers, Doctor Patience. Patience is here with His Imperial Majesty. So, this is the the, the armor. This is the armor, as you can see. It stands to her that uh, His Imperial Majesty was able to, not was able to, was motivated to the doctor program. Yes, and he's a full time professor today. Thanks to her. And did I tell you that she, she she's on the same faculty with me? Oh, is she? Yes. Wow, I know she's a doctor. I know she's a doctor, but I didn't know she's in the same faculty. She teaches at the university. What a coincidence. University. What a coincidence. Yes. I'm yes. so impressed. Yes. So, dear viewers, as you can see here, um, uh, the, 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 the wife of his uh, imperial majesty is right there. And uh, this is a very beautiful palace, as you can see. Could you just, in one minute, tell us what each of the, 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 the objects signify? Oh, my God, you're putting me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody can help. Okay. I think it's Imperial Majesty. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's Imperial Majesty would be very, very... Uh, right. Well, I, I think I, I will just... The tiger skin, you should know what it is. Yeah. May uh -huh. I sit here? Yes, you can, please. Thank you. Yeah. With your permission. Yeah, the royal cloth. Okay, this one. Yes, royal cloth. And uh, this is, again, another symbol of royalty. This is the, the horn that the, the ancestral kings have taken wine off oh, of. I see. If anybody can drink out of this horn. Is it a special wine or oh. in general? Well, generally the wine was the palm wine. Oh. That's what my ancestors had. Okay. They didn't have beer, oh, no. even though my father had beer and whiskey, but before him there was no beer. <laughs> see, no. So see. this one, you see this is ebony. Okay. So this 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 horn by itself yes, is very powerful. If something happens yes. and I drink out of this horn and I get you to drink and you drank it, yes, it weakens you. Wow. You become a different being. Wow. Even if you had come to, 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 to make trouble. If wow. I drank it out of it and I gave you the same you change you, the intention of yes. the person. If you had a wicked plan. Yes. Wow. So That's yeah, powerful. I can only say that the, the, and what not the fly whisk. I've seen that but I've never known. Well this is it. the fly whisk is what you acknowledge greetings. You were talking about greetings. So oh. when you greet you drink in it. a food, yeah. You acknowledge greetings. Wow. Yes. Friends. Yeah, and the bangles you have in your hand. Uh, yeah, actually, um, I I inherited them all. I see. You know, um, <coughs> what is that called? Ivory. Yes, well. It's very, very expensive. Yes, yeah, very pricey. That's true. So this is ivory, and then this one is very special. Wow. It's so difficult to see it anywhere else. Okay. Yeah, you remember that's what you are trying. The Chinese are trying to, for you to imitate. Is it? To imitate ivory. Exactly. Yeah. 
Wow. So that's original. Yes. Of course. Yes. I don't need to ask that. Yeah. But for patients, where did you get that motivation to 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 inspire your husband to 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 seek, not to seek, but to further academic excellence, to further the he has reached the highest level of academic. Well, he was already there. He just needed the the push, the degree, the degree to show that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you were there to just to make a work. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'm so impressed. You have a traditional leader who is also an academician. It makes a difference. And both of you have chosen your education as 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 as, as primordial for a legacy you want to leave behind because you pass through education, you know how important it is. Yeah, my education is life. Yeah. It is. Yeah, the world is a classroom. Oh. Yeah. That's so, so powerful. To navigate life, you have to be educated. Yeah. So what message do you have to our children? Most of them who come to the United States don't want to study. They just want to work and make money. They don't want to study. I, I've seen many. What advice can you give as a mother, as a mother of the kingdom of Atuabechi? Yeah. yeah, I think I think uh, education is the only thing that remains when everything is forgotten. Everything it's is imper- it's imperial. It, 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 and it's, everything is that. lost. And uh, so you can have wealth. You can have all the way. all the money, the, the, the houses, the, the, the goods, and whatever you acquire with money that you're chasing yes but that can go away exactly. in a, a blink of an eye that's true yeah and so not people what rich remains people. yeah what remains what you get in you that's what you die with you won't take wealth with you but you will go with what is in you so and you yeah. two have distinguished yourself in the academia you're a doctor really? <laughs> <laughs> from, from 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 your parkour and what you've gone through Two, two, uh, two bachelors, a master's, and a doctorate. Two masters. Two masters. Yes. In fact, I have it. I did my research. Oh. <laughs> yes, I'm so impressed. I did my research. Let me very specific because I think this is something that has to be acknowledged. So you have a bachelor in education. That's why I was asking about education, and I now understand why it is primordial. Well, that is just going into teaching. Yes. It, it it's it's more like um, a legacy that came from my family, family. my parents. Yeah, come from a family of teachers. Okay. Yeah, my father was a schools manager, oh, and my mother was a teacher. In fact, she taught all of us in the same grade, Ooh. fifth grade. We all her children went through fifth grade, and um, it's one thing that I did not want to do. Okay. Because I grew in it, I wanted something else, but I didn't know what else. So it just happened wow. that I had to be. Impressive. All my sisters are, my brother is. Hmm. Thanks to family. And we are all teachers. And then the bachelor's in child psychology. Why do you think that is uh, primordial and of capital importance? Oh, you can work with children, or children without understanding, the understanding psychology. Yeah, yeah. Science of behavior and how they are thinking, yeah, okay, and why they are thinking the way the they way are. they are thinking, yes. Yeah. Wow. You specialize in that, a bachelor in that, that's quite impressive. Mm-hmm. And then you went into a master's teacher education, so you're an expert in, in, in forming teachers. Yeah. When, when we left Cameroon, that was what she did, she was teaching teachers how to teach. Can you imagine that? Yeah, yeah. I saw that the, <laughs> any year on there, yes, wow, yeah. That's why I'm impressed. Uh, while I was teaching, I also school principal I see. at Quincy Balingo. So okay. I had two jobs in Cameroon. Oh my that God. That was strange at a time when one <laughs> job was just what yeah. people understood. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Quite impressive. And then a master's in special education, course categorical. Ca- categorical. Could you elucidate that big term, course categorical? Oh, because uh, special education is in three main categories. Um, you specialize in that you want to be uh, for the intellectually challenged oh, um, or that, that is with students with uh, cognitive disabilities they are intellectually challenged or you want to work 
with those with emotional and behavioral issues, okay. or you just want to work with those who have learning problems. Mm -hmm. So those are the three categories, learning disabilities, emotional and uh, behavioral issues, and then you have intellectual challenge. So when you cross categorical, it means you qualify, you are trained to work with those different categories. I see. Some people they try to specialize on one of them. Yeah, wow. but I can work with all those three. Wow. Very impressive. And finally, a PhD in curriculum and instruction leadership. Wow, that is quite coincidental with 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 uh, this uh, Imperial Majesty leadership. Oh, um, <laughs> yeah. leadership, not uh, I'm not the kind of leader I think you're thinking. Okay. Yeah, I look at leadership, uh, the seventh leadership. It's, it's supposed yeah, to be Yeah, the, the seventh leadership, the one that you uh, can be a leader in a classroom. Exactly. Yeah. Um, in fact, um, most of the people I was working with were going into administration. Okay. But I thought of uh, being in the curriculum. That's good. Part of it will give me the opportunity to really work and design learning That's true. because I believe that um, the current way of learning is structured in most uh, institutions That's true. doesn't really consider the working class, it's mostly for the middle class. Exactly. So I went into it trying to understand it so I can be that voice wow. or be able to give voice to be misunderstood, the Exactly. And, uh, and those who want an opportunity, I yeah, yeah, like here. being a coming from a special education background, that is why I thought, well, this also problem. The curriculum itself wow. doesn't help with what problem, the struggling yeah. learning skills. Yeah. That's what guided me, and that's why my PhD is also trained on that. Wow. It's impressed by your sacrifice, your passion for knowledge. That's quite impressive. Congratulations. Thank you. When I went to Japan, that's how the Japanese yep. show reverence and yes. respect. They bow their yep. heads like this. Well, that is culture. And I do that to, yeah. you, to both of you. I'm so proud of both of you. Oh, we are proud of the of young you man, too, yeah. that you have become. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I remember the last time I saw you, how little you were. And, uh, I was quite yeah. little, and as, as I said at the beginning, it was thanks to His Imperial High Majesty that I was inspired to go into language. Okay. People have kept, ask, have kept asking me, well, how did you learn so many languages? I said, once you're a child and somebody, you are, somebody touches you, inspires you, man, you can go, you can, you can escape. And that was yeah. what happened. I'm so proud, so proud to Interpreter, see you. switching into yeah. French and English. <laughs> Il est en train de dire que c'est la dire que en fonction de s'agissant de... Oh, oh you know, I was so moved as a child. Oh my goodness. No, seriously. Yeah. That was one movement to languages. Yeah. So, so I'm proud. most appreciative and grateful for the hospitality, for the opportunity for this interview. Mm -hmm. Dear viewers, this interview is meant for education. It's educative. That's the aim of the interview. Educative is a scientific interview so we could learn. Yeah, as you said, the world is a school. I have learned a lot today. Okay. I don't regret coming. So what are you going to do with it? Okay. I'm <laughs> going to tell you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>